are debuting 7.30 p.m. on Sunday, the 25th of November. South Africa's most well-informed political puppet, Chester Missing, is launching his very first talk show. It's all called Almost News with uh, Chester Missing. And he joins us now on Mags on Media for an exclusive preview. Mr. Missing, welcome to you. It's I think honor to be here, Jeremy. I'm very excited. I've always wanted to be on Mags on Media. Always, always wanted to. We are so delighted to have you. South African audiences, I think, need to know why you've been given your own TV talk show. Uh, corruption, really. Uh, I, 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 I paid the right people. How much? Uh, in, in, in puppet fla favors, I'm sure you saw the Gigaba text. Wow, I went dark very fast. <laughs> no, I, you know, the thing is, Jeremy, that South Africa politics is ridiculous. I don't know if you've been watching the EFF outside the Zondo Commission. They are going bonkers. They really are competing with Comedy Central for the, being the funniest thing in the country. So a uh, puppet having his own TV show makes sense. I mean, we had a puppet running SABC Cloudy, so he opened the doors for us. I think that's kind of where it's coming from. So Chester Missing, every Sunday night, what can we expect from this new show? Well, it's going to be chaos and mayhem. We're going to unpack the news of the day and some long lead stories, stuff like Steinhoff or what's going on with Data or is Patricia DeLille still have a career? And, and then we're going to interview some politicians and, 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 and really look in an analytical way, not just the news. We're going to analyze the news from a puppet perspective. What gives you the authority, what gives you the expertise to wade into this complicated world of analysis? Well, you know, absolutely nothing. Basically like Justice Malala. <laughs> no just justice, I love your work. So, describe South Africa's political landscape for us right now. I'm also interested to know how close you have become to President Ramaphosa. I'm very close to Ramaphosa. He's always been a friend of mine ever since I met him at the Amit Katrada Foundation. I mean, he and I are about the same heights, Jeremy. I don't know if you've stood next to Ramaphosa, but uh, he really is just, he looks like a munchkin. I love him. Um, the, the, the fact is that um, I, I, I think South Africa has huge Huge scope for interesting and entertaining analysis. It is, you know, politics is to South Africans what, what sport is almost. It's another sport. We're basically like Kaiser Chiefs with tenders. Do you think that he's doing a good job, Sir Ramaphosa? Of course he's doing a good job of getting loans from Busasa. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got one final question for you, Chess, and it's something that worries me terribly as a television presenter myself. If yep. we've got to the space where in China, for instance, you have artificial intelligence newsreaders. Now you've got puppets hosting artificial talk Artificial intelligence shows. newsreaders. Wow, that's amazing. Where does this leave people like me? Are we without a job in the future, do you think? Yes, you're going to have to start your very own uh, news presenter uh, union. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to call yourselves because uh, there's no union for puppets. There's a union for dummies. They call themselves Kosatu. Boom, I'm out. Chester Missing, good luck with the new show, and I hope that you succeed. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the program. A real honor, honor, Jeremy. Thank you for having us here. I appreciate it. The program debuts 7.30 on Sunday, the 25th of November. Let me tell you, this is must-watch television. Well, we all know the old adage that it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. Well, our next story is testament to exactly that. Nestled just outside the mother city, the rise of Cape Town Film Studios to become Africa's first and only high-tech custom-built film studio complex has been nothing short of meteoric. But it did come with its own set of growing pains. When you started thinking about this and people say, we are going to create this kind of studio, world-class people coming here. It's never been done, and everybody were more or less negative. There was nothing. It was literally just a piece of sand. And I must say that it wasn't easy because of perception, you know, that you think you can shoot in Africa location. In South Africa, we were well known for that, but to basically create a studio where you built. And all those skills were not proven as such for a studio. So people felt, how would people come here? Why would people pass Europe? to fly all the way down to South Africa for a high-tech manufacturing where you need specialists to build these things and people to understand this world. So that seemed like most people just felt it's incredible. People did ask me often this, if I really believe this is possible and they felt the answer should be no. Under the leadership of Chief Executive Officer Nico Decker, this dedicated hub for media, entertainment, film and related industries is now ranked as the best film studio complex of its kind. The key has been public-private partnerships, but also collaboration with the international film companies who now frequent the studios. People like Sony, Warner, HBO, 
basically all the big studios are fighting to get in. I'm turning away work. Even if you offer me today a million rands a day, I can't unfortunately take you. We are totally fully booked for the next year. The studio is unique in the way it's managed to retain a lot of the infrastructure built for specific productions through clever negotiations and partnerships, something many international studios haven't managed to achieve. This, of course, is a big draw card for producers looking to save on time and cost since the various settings can be customized and changed depending on the need of a production. We are currently sitting in Soweto. This set was originally built for Long Walk to Freedom, Mandela Long Walk to Freedom. It then became a set that was used in Eye in the Sky, the wonderful film about the drone war of Gavin Hood. It was also used for Mogadishu in a reenactment of Black Hawk Down and many others. But now it is used, of course, by Helena Spring for Poppin on Gema. And it is just one of those interesting sets that can be converted in many ways. But at the moment, you've got so many worlds here. You've got a Caribbean world, a tropical world, a tropical forest, for instance, and two major tanks, a beach tank and a deep sea tank. That was built during the time of Black Cells by the studio. And I'm very proud of it because that was almost an impossible task. You know, people said, Nico, can we have this wonderful tropical island this unbelievable ocean and the ships to be built, ships that were to be built from 1740, from scratch, from nothing. Now, of course, I'm not responsible for the ships in a sense, but we were responsible still for that island, for the beach, the tanks, the infrastructure. And I don't know how we did it. We did it in four months. And I think that kind of reputation that we are able to do the impossible. I heard one of the largest producers, uh, directors in the world said to people, Go to Nico, his team is crazy enough, they will probably do it for you. International heavy hitters are often surprised by the studio's agility and capability when it comes to fast and efficient turnaround times, skill and management. Nothing is too difficult, everything is possible. We have recently, for instance, at the moment we've got, as I said, HBO Warrior. We also have Universal with um, Inside Man 2 shooting here. Then we have two other major shows that we can't mention at the moment. One of those shows came in only three weeks ago and said they need 1,700 square meters of production space because we haven't had enough. I thought, well, that sounds a bit harsh. When do you need it? I said, in two weeks' time. In two weeks' time, the studio with its partners managed to build 1,700 square meters of temporary production offices, including electricity, water, sewage, uh, Wi-Fi, IT, uh, telephony, whatever you require. And they're working already. The studio has played host to recognizable film and series casts and crews, and they just keep on coming. With tight security measures in place, the studio provide celebrities a considerable amount of privacy, all away from the prying eyes of the international media, something not always achievable in the United States or Europe. Many international productions are very concerned about the environmental footprint it leaves. Cape Town Film Studio sees itself as a green facility with a real responsibility towards the environment. During the drought, the industry went through the most severe decline in its history. But the studio, due to its environmental policies, was still able to attract uh, people like Google that shot here, uh, Origin, and um, also HBO with Warrior. The only reason was because we had all the environmental elements in place. We could supply other people with water and we could go about one year, 14 months, if I remember correctly, without any water from the outside. Then we also very, very serious about our environmental management. Uh, all the waste is separated and we even have a worm farm where we create worm tea, which is a natural fertilizer. For big international uh, players, the environmental commitment being a green studio is very important. The impact on the local economy has been massive with international productions incentivized to use a certain percentage of local crew. So international productions are getting a rebate from our Department of Trade and Industry of around about 20%. For every cent or every rand that you spend here in South Africa, you can get 20% back if you can prove it. And that helps. That helps a lot. That, that amount is capped at around about $3 million. But it helps a lot because um, worldwide, people, countries are fighting with rebates and special incentives to get productions in. The main reason why do people want, why do they have governments give that? Because it's known 
as a massive job creator, especially a studio, is a skills transfer vehicle. You transfer skills to people who haven't had skills before and they become specialists. At the same time, it's a quick job creator. 80,000 people employed in eight years is not nothing. Nico also believes the full potential of the studio to stimulate job creation and skills development has not yet been met, but also feels that the film and creative industries should be something that South African youth is exposed to from an early age. I believe that one of the biggest elements missing in our schools, universities and in society is not by stimulating creative thinking and imagination. And I think those two things are core to everything we want to do. It is only through creative thinking, creative thought, and by teaching that, that we will escape from that narrowness. A number of international and local productions are currently on the go, but we've been sworn to absolute secrecy. Let us know what you thought of this and our other stories on today's show on our social media platforms. Until next time, goodbye to you and thank you for watching.